Welcome to OSPF Troubleshooting. Let's take a quick look at our network. You may want to get familiar with the actual IP addresses and where they are. We've got R1, 2, 3, 4, and R5. The last octet of each router is the router's number. So R1 last octet is always going to be dot one, R2 last octet dot two on these interfaces, and R5 dot five and so forth. With OSPF, it's really simple to troubleshoot. The first thing we want to do is verify that we have our neighbors. Now, if we don't have neighborships, we don't troubleshoot those. Once we get the neighborships between each and every device, then we can take a look at troubleshooting why certain routes might be missing as well. So if we don't have connectivity between R1 and R2, I mean, they're not neighboring up, what I would do first is verify basic IP connectivity. Does layer three work? And if it does, that's great. Then we can troubleshoot the configuration for OSPF. So on R1, a very simple test is show IP OSPF neighbors. <laughs> and sure enough, we've got no neighbors from R1. So the first thing we might do is say, well, Mr. R1, are your interfaces up? Show IP interface brief. And it looks like they are all up. So we've got these three interfaces, this one, plus a couple of loopbacks as well that we're dealing with. So the interfaces are up. Let's see if we can ping R2, just verify we have basic connectivity. So we'll do a ping of 12.0.0.2, and that does work. Okay, so why exactly aren't we neighboring up? Well, maybe, just maybe, we haven't enabled OSPF on these interfaces. What's the quickest way to check? It's this, show IP OSPF interface brief. And that will show us exactly which interfaces have OSPF enabled on them. So FA00, we're troubleshooting this neighborship right here. FA00, sure enough, is enabled. Look at that. So OSPF is enabled on that interface, but we still don't have a neighborship. Hmm, why is that? Well, let's go take a look at R2. Maybe R2 is not enabled for OSPF. So we'll go to R2. We already know we can ping R1. We'll just show IP OSPF interface brief just for the Reader's Digest view, and FA00 is enabled there. So, golly, they both think they're the designated router. You know why that is? Is because they can't see each other, so they assume that they're the King Kong for that network segment. So we know OSPF is enabled for both of them. Let's get into the details. Let's do an R1. Let's do a show IP OSPF. Just look at the general OSPF process. And here is... OSPF process one has a router ID of 172.16.1.1. That must be the highest loopback interface on this router, or, or we have the router ID set to that. Either way, it would cause that to happen. And if we scroll down here, it says we have three interfaces in the backbone area. It's inactive. That's because we haven't seen any neighbors yet. That's the reason for that. It's also specifying that the area is requiring simple password authentication. That's because in router configuration mode, we have issued the command area zero authentication, just like that. So even if we haven't set a password on the interface, if the hello messages both don't indicate that we're doing simple authentication, R2 won't neighbor up. So let's go up to R2 and do a show IP OSPF. So here's the command at the very top. And I'm going to hit the space bar to scroll down one page, and this area... This, well, R2 believes the area zero doesn't require any authentication. Now, we could fix this by either saying area zero authentication here or finding out what the rest of the network has. So if we go to R3 as an innocent bystander, and we do a show IP OSPF and hit a space bar, it says no authentication as well. And in fact, the entire network is not using authentication. So that's preventing our neighborship. So back to R1, we'll just go into router configuration mode. So config T, and then router OSPF1, and we'll simply say no to area zero authentication. If that's the only problem stopping the authentication or stopping the neighborship between R1 and R2, it should come up pretty darn quick. And wow, we get a whole bunch of neighborships up. So R2, it came up, R3 came up, and R4 came up, it looks like. Let's do a quick verification. Show IP OSPF neighbors. And sure enough, we're in the full state with all three routers. That's fantastic. From R1's perspective, our neighborships are solid. Now let's go to R2 and verify R2 has a neighborship with R5. So upon R2, we'll do a show IP OSPF neighbors. And that looks good as well. 
Oh, that doesn't look good. <laughs> it looks good for R1. Here's the IP address of the peer that we're uh, neighboring with. So R2 is peering with 12001, which is R1, who has the router ID of this. So we don't have a neighborship with R5. Do we have basic IP connectivity? Let's see. Let's do a ping to 25.0.0.5. And the answer is no, we don't. So if layer 2 isn't happy, layer 3 can't be happy. And if layer 3 isn't happy, layer 4 can't be happy. And that's where OSPF lives. It's its own layer 4 protocol, and it rides on top of IP. And if IP isn't working, OSPF doesn't have a chance. So let's see what's going on with the interfaces on R2. We'll do a show IP interface brief. And uh, that would be our problem. So FA01 right here is administratively shut down and as a result it's not being able to forward packets including OSPF hello messages. So back to configuration mode we go. And we'll simply do a no shutdown on this guy and give it a few seconds to come up. Now if there were a switch here, uh, switches if it wasn't running rapid spanning tree and did not have port fast, it might take up to 30 seconds before the switch starts allowing the frames to be forwarded off of R2. So we want to give time for that, but this console message indicates that life is good because we already have a OSPF neighborship coming up from R5, or at least somebody who claims to have the router ID of 172.16.2.5. So let's do a show IP OSPF neighbors just to verify that. And sure enough, there's 20, Mr. R5's IP address. 25005, and there's the neighborship. Okay, so two down. Let's take a look at the rest. Let's go to R5 and see if he can get neighborship with R4. So over on R5, we'll show IP OSPF neighbors, and he's got a neighborship with R2, which is this physical address, and this is the router ID for R2, but he doesn't have a relationship with R5. Why not? Well, again, it's the same process. Make sure that layer three IP connectivity is valid between these two. So on R5, we'll do a ping to 45.0.0.4, which is the IP address of this guy right here. So we're pinging from R5 to R4. Now that works. Let's do a show IP route just to make sure that we're on the same sheet of music. So the 45 network should be directly connected. Oh, it is. Look at that. So the 45 network is directly connected. And we have two routes for the 45 network, though this is amazing. Check this out, everybody. What is your router going to do if it has to forward a packet to 45004? The answer is it's going to look in its routing table for the longest match. Well, its directly connected interface is a 24-bit network. It's learning via OSPF about a 28-bit network. So R5 is actually forwarding the packet out FA01, this interface, to R2, who's forwarding it to R1, who's forwarding it to R4. We do not have a neighborship right here. So let's correct that. If somebody is advertising a 28-bit mask, it's probably R4 on this segment. See, if the mask is not correct, if the length of the network isn't correct, these two neighbors won't neighbor up. So R4 is very likely got an incorrect mask on that interface. How do we check? We go to R4, and we say show IP OSPF interface brief. And that will give us everything. It'll say FA01 right here. Sure enough, you've got a bad mask. So we'll go back to configuration mode, interface FA0 slash 1, and we'll do an IP address of 45.0.0.4 and with a 3-octet mask like it should be. Now OSPF is going to be really fast to converge. It's basically the neighborship already came up because now they agree upon the network length, and that was causing the failure before. So we go back to R5, which is right here. On R5, a show IP OSPF interface brief. Shows us, wow, we've got our interfaces, and I meant to do neighbors. So there's our neighbor statements. And we've got two neighbors with their router IDs on the left and the actual physical addresses we're reaching them on the right. Super. So R5 is good with R4. Let's go to R4 and make sure he's good with the rest of the world as well. Show IP OSPF neighbors. He's got two neighbors. He's got a neighbor at 5, which I know is R5. He's got a neighbor at 1, which I know is R1. But we are missing the neighborship with R3. This network right here is the 40, uh, 34 network. Let's just make sure we have connectivity with that. It 
Show IP interface brief shows up the 34 interface on FA10. We've got the IP address. Let's ping 34.0.0.3, and that works. Okay, so we've got basic layer 3 connectivity. Maybe it's an OSPF thing. Must be. Um, let's just take a look at the details for R4 for this interface. We know it's included in OSPF. Well, we can verify that. Show IP OSPF interface. And I'll say brief on that so you don't have to look at all that output. And here is FA10. So indeed it is. It's OSPF process ID 1 and area 0 with that network. That looks great. Let's go up to R3 and just make sure R3 agrees with all of that because we know we have basic connectivity. So show IP OSPF interface brief. And here we have FA01, which is this guy right here. And area zero, that looks good. The network looks the same, that looks good. But we aren't getting the neighborship. So now, at this point, we might want to go and look at more detail regarding the OSPF interfaces. Show IP OSPF interface for FA0 slash 1. And that's going to show me the details just for that interface. So here we go. We've got this network, that area. Here's the router ID, network type broadcast. We have a priority of one for the DR election. That's a default. It shows who the designated router is. R3 says it must be me because I don't have any neighbors. And it has these hello timers. Hello timer, dead interval, and so forth. Let's go compare these to R4. So on R4, the show IP OSPF interface for FA1 slash 0. And if we take a look at all the details, I see it right here. The area matches, which it has to. The network matches, which it has to. But what doesn't match is this right there. The hello and dead interval timers have to match. And the hello messages, if they don't, they will not neighbor up. Even if it was like one second off, they won't neighbor up. So R4 and R5 are using – see R4 and R3 have a different hello interval. The default should be 10. So if somebody played with them. On R3. I think you know who that somebody was. So we'll go take care of it. We'll do a do, show, run, interface FA0 slash 1. So there's the culprit right there. We'll say interface FA0 slash 1. We'll say no and just paste that in. And with the hello interval now set to 10 seconds, the default, because I took off the custom one, now they should, if that was the only problem, they should be neighboring up. So now we've got full neighborships. I'm thinking R4, let's just do a show IP OSPF neighbor from R3's perspective. And R3 knows about R1, R3 knows about R4, rather, and R3 knows about R1. That looks great. looks fantastic. Now, do we have all of our routes in place? Now, one thing we could do is we could use a TCL script in the CCI lab environment. We do that quite a bit. But for here, let's just take a spot check. Let's do a show IP route for yet for OSPF learned routes. So here's our OSPF learned routes. And do we have the 55 network? Yes, we do. Do we have the 25 network? Yes, we do. <laughs> There's the 12 network in there. Oh, that's a directly connected route from R1's perspective, so it wouldn't show up under an OSPF learned route. So all the directly connected are safe on R1's perspective. Do we have the 45? Yes. Do we have the 33 network? I don't see this network right here, the 33 network. We know we have a neighborship between R1 and R3. Why aren't we getting the 33 network? The answer could be that R3 is not advertising it. I mean, if we have neighborships, now we're down to the point where we're trying to solve why we don't have specific routes. So let's go over to R3 and ask him, Dear Mr. R3, show IP OSPF interface brief. What interfaces are involved? And he says, loopback 0, FA01 is right here and FA00. And sure enough, he hasn't included FA10. Hmm. So let's add a network. Let's do a show IP protocols. And the show IP protocols command says that, wow, look at this. This statement right here, which is the network statements, that says include every interface that has an IP address. That's what that says. So I was looking for specific network statements. Maybe they didn't include one that had 33. Now, because the network statement is wide open saying, I don't, the wildcard mask says, I don't care what bits are on in the 32 bits on or off, everything matches, and it's in area zero, 
why isn't the 33 network being included? Let's do a show IP interface brief, see if the interface is up. It's one slash zero, so it's up, but it doesn't have an IP address. So for all intents and purposes, this network doesn't exist because R3 is the only guy connected to it and it hasn't assigned an IP address to it. See, the switch on its own power, it's just a layer two switch. But the router and layer three devices actually determine what the network address is by the IP addresses they have on their interface. So we'll go into interface FA1 slash zero, and we'll say IP address, and we'll put it on a mask. Now the LSA for R3, because there's a change in the topology, has just been sent. R1 and everybody else has got a copy of that because this is all area zero. And as a result, they're now updating their shortest path first algorithm and figuring out the best way to get everywhere. So if we go back to R1 and we do a show IP route again, we should have, there it is, the 33 network. So we can spot check the rest. I think you've got a good sample of this. The whole process is really simple. Make sure when you're running OSPF that you have basic solid connectivity between the various neighbors that want to be neighbors. Then we run OSPF, and when our network statements include these interfaces, basically the network statement says include 12 or include 13 or include 14, and those networks get part of OSPF. Then once we have all of our neighborships resolved, basic IP connectivity, correct OSPF configuration, then we can start taking a look, do we have routes that are causing us, or that are missing? And if you have all your neighborships up and you have routes that are missing, it's either due to some type of filtering, which we didn't have going on in our network, or some router forgot to advertise a network that was directly connected. And as a result, no one else learned about it. Hey, thank you very much for taking a few minutes and walking through OSPF troubleshooting with me. It's been a blast. I'll catch you next time.